born here, but then I, I graduated from Holmberg. That's about five miles down the tracks. So. But I moved here in 70. My wife, uh, uh, the girl I married, they lived, well, down the street there. I got married, but then I moved here in 1970. But I was around here all my life. You know, locally. I, I was born in Jefferson County, which is the county that Steel City is in, in Fairbury, which is the county seat. I lived in Janssen most of my life, and uh, we moved to Steel City in 2000. We bought the house in 2007 and moved down here in 2009. But I spent a lot of time in Steel City as a, as a kid, riding horses with a friend of mine who lived down here. So I, I was here a lot as a child or as a half-grown kid. So I, I don't remember for sure, but I think the p highest the population ever got was, I've heard 600, but I think it was more like 400 to 450 was the biggest that they ever got. They may have gotten to 600 at some point, but I think it was more like 400, 450. Um, they had, I think, three churches at one time. And the old Baptist church is still, I don't know if you saw that when you came into town. Yeah. That's still standing. That was the Baptist church. And uh, at one point, and I don't remember the year, they consolidated the churches, and now they just have the one church, the Presbyterian church, which is still active here in town. Um, our population is just around 50 now. Well, you know, of course, the railroad came through here, so any town that had a railroad that came through did well, you know. And you have to remember, too, that the, you, you, your transportation was with horses and buggies or horses and wagons or horseback or walking, so it wasn't real easy to go to Fairbury or Beatrice to get supplies or your groceries. So all the little towns had a grocery store, uh, mercantile, lumber yards. We had stockyards here. Um, uh, they had they had just about everything that you would see like in Beatrice. The railroad hurt when the railroad took out their depot and, and the section gangs. That's hurt the town a lot. Because they used to have a section gang out of here. That was, every little town up and down the railroad had a section gang, you know, half a dozen guys that worked a certain part of the tracks, you know. But when they, when the railroad started getting better, way they started cutting jobs and spreading them out. So, the railroad made it and kind of, you could say the railroad broke it too, or put it under. Uh, we don't have a lot of children in the community. We have only the one business, um, the Salty Dog Saloon downtown. Um, I don't think we used to have a, a, a ready mix company, but they, uh, the people that owned that, consolidated with a one in February, and so then we don't have that anymore. Uh, we don't have a gas station. Uh, we have the post office and the uh, the saloon downtown. And so the the pipelines kind of bring jobs back in. Not really. Yeah. No, not really. No. They hired local help around, but they didn't really. Nobody moved here. It worked on the pipeline or the windmill farm east of town. Some people worked here that what was out of job, you know, but they didn't stick around. Pipeline. Pipeline just came and went. All, about the only business we had off of them was a post office, the bar head business, and the, and the trailer court head business, and that's about it. Um, it. It's been a positive impact for pretty much um, everybody that I've talked to. Now, I can't speak for everybody, but um, you know, when they are working here, and you know, we this is not the first pipeline, we have four pipelines coming through Still City. So the, the oldest one is I think 1952 and we've never had any issues at all. So if you're looking for somebody to, to say bad things about the pipeline, you won't find it probably here. Uh, the pipeline has been really good to us. They've 
you know, if we have any concerns or questions there, um, I, I can make a phone call right now and get the head honcho on the line. And um, they've just been really good. Uh, they bring, when they're working here, they bring um, jobs um, for, for some of the people in the area, not necessarily just from Steel City, but, and they uh, frequent our um, our saloon, which is a restaurant, you know, she has, and, and they, they frequent, they most of the time eat lunch down there. I mean, they ain't gonna hurt anything. They're raising hell about it going through Nebraska. You ever seen a map of old pipelines across Nebraska and what the hell's one more gonna hurt? That's my feelings about it. Again, when you're working with the government or with companies like a Keystone, uh, they have delays because of weather and whatever. Um, and I know Keystone's got a lot of other things going on too. So we just play it by ear. You know, we just, we don't have to, you know, there's not anything that we have to really do. Um, they let us know when they're going to be coming down or coming through. So we just wait to hear from them.